Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo and the Motion Blur filter. Motion Blur can be used in numerous ways. I'm just going to use it firstly on an image, just very simple, but you can use it with shapes, type, etc. And first thing to do, go to Filters and make sure you've got the layer selected. If the layer is not selected, it will not work. So go to Filters and then Blur and then Motion Blur motion blur there and what you can see straight away you've got this radius setting and you can set the radius there and it looks goes up to 100. You've also got this rotation as well so you can rotate it around but personally I think the wonderful interactive feature is much much better so you can actually use the rotation as well you can just do that you can see it. but not only that you can push you can see straight away you can push the up to the 520 and beyond so you can simply put it like that very subtle or maybe have it going upwards or that way and so on and so on so you can quickly and do it by interactive and that is so much easier now what you can do click apply so that's it just been blurred now what you can also do with as with all the filters you can always go to a layer and you can fade motion blur so you can always fade it and you can just see then the effect see slightly faded and that's using normal but you can always run through you've got dark and difference and so on so you can just try it screen etc so you can get a nice sort of ah quite like that effect very nice but what you can also do of course you can always apply it more than once so you've always got filters repeat motion blur you can apply it there and you can also set up a macro macros are super useful for that so what you can do just record so view studio and a macro and you've got macros here so you can record all the steps so if you do motion blur 15 20 times and then you can click and apply it to any image or etc so let's just remove that now also what you can do you can use like a layer so i've got here this is a layer but you can also just duplicate this layer so a layer and duplicate you can just go down there and you can see what you've got you've got an image just like that and what you can do of course it could be any other image it doesn't have to be the same image but what you can do you can go to filters blur and a motion blur and straight away you can see then what happens is you've got that lovely effect there where it just jumps beyond the the edge of the image and you can move that around so you can create some very nice visual effects just there and actually you can go just keep it below the going off over the top otherwise you end up with a sort it's not always the best thing for some filters so you've got there the effect and you can of course move it around and you can always combine it so you can always go to normal and darken and run through then you've got add you can create some very interesting visual effects just by using two layers and of course the motion blur filter and of course you don't have to have just two you could have three or four so you could just apply it like that you've got that layer duplicate it again so you've got three layers and of course go to there, filters repeat motion blur obviously apply a different effect if you want go to filters and again blur motion blur maybe make it more extreme go up like that and then of course what you can do you've got blurs and you can go to say darken lighten screen add and of course that one you can also have another one so you can create maybe with average whatever so you can run through a variety of different designs and of course what you can do you can always rotate these designs as well so you can see it duplicated there so it's sort of shimmering sort of off at that way so I'm just going to remove that now and you can see there there's the actual image there that's been blurred I think it's quite a nice effect and of course you can always duplicate that so hold down the ultra option key and you can see you can duplicate that design and then hold that up there hold there and you can see what happens there and of course they're all using the add you don't have to use add you can use multiply instead maybe and again hold down the ultra option key and you can see the result there lighten and so on and so on so you can create multiple layers multiple blending and result in that now i'm just going to go back to the image again now what you can also do undo all that get back to the original design there's the original design oh, just before there what you can also do you can use channels as well channels are great so what you go to view and studio and channels and then you've got channels there you can select one of these channels apply the motion blur to that so you can create some interesting combinations using channels also what you can do you can use selections you don't have to so you go over here to the selection and you can select that area you say you know what i just want motion blur just for that or maybe 
outside. You can invert the selection. So go to select, invert the selection, and then of course go over here to filters, blur, and motion blur, and you can apply motion blur to that. And you can see obviously this is untouched. And you can of course maybe apply a slightly different motion blur for inside. Undo that. Again, remove that selection. What you can also do, you can use shapes. I think shapes are actually even more effective. So I'm just going to quickly, let's just go for a new document. Let's just go for a new document. Completely different. 400, no, I don't want 400. That's ridiculously small. Say 1,200, 1,200. And create. Then I'm going to go and shape. Let's go for it. It could be any shape. And it also can be any color. Maybe obviously white. It's not going to be so useful here. But say, if I'd actually filled that with black, maybe that would have been, but say a diamond tool. Just reasonable. And you've got a shape, white shape there. Now I don't want that. I want obviously something like red. So go for red. And what you can do with that, you can go to filters and again blur and go down to motion blur. And you can see the effect then. You can use that and create just from a very basic shape that sort of design. And again, you can still interactively move that around. Now, before you do that, what you can also do, you can actually, with that vector design there, and it's turned into a pixel layer. Once it's once you apply the effect, the filter, it becomes a pixel layer. So filters, you can go like distort and deform. So you can deform that design. So instead of just having that basic design there, what you can do, you can obviously distort it and you can break it apart. So maybe have a couple of bits kind of fly off there. And so on and so on. So just something slightly different from the diamond. So once you've got that, you can resize that, of course. You can always resize it. Apply effects, maybe. But what you can also do, you can go to filters, and again, blur and motion blur. And then you've got this design. So you can really create some very abstract designs simply by just blurring that. Combine and deform as well as this. Also, you can combine multiple shapes. So you can create some very unusual designs, not just a diamond or star, use that. And then of course, once you've done that, you can click apply, and then you can hold down the alter option key again, and you can duplicate that design and create all numbers of combinations. And of course, you can rotate that design and so on and so on. Now I'm just gonna go, actually I'm gonna just quickly go for, well, let's just create a layer, new, new layer. And I'm just gonna fill that edit and fill. I'm going to fill it with black. It's black. Apply. And now I'm just going to go for a white shape. So I'm just going to quickly go for say, something very simple. Ellipse. Very simple design. Now I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to go with white. Because I think white creates a more ghostly effect than red. So you've got that design there. And again, you can, if you want, you can deform it. Of course, you can go one of the other ones as well. Distort, maybe mirror. And you can then go there. And you can create all kinds of different designs that way. And you can change the input. Well, I'm going to go with that. Click apply. So I've got that design there. Well, what I can do, I can now apply the motion blur to that. So filters, blur and motion blur. And you can see then the result of that. And you can see you can get a very weird and wonderful sort of ghostly looking effects. And also again, you can hold down the alter option key and you can duplicate that design. Just fill the whole design and of course you can manipulate that design further, rotate that. And of course what you can also do, let's just actually I'll do it on the other one. That's the first one. So what you can do, you can go to filters and again distort and deform. And you can deform that design. So you've got this lovely effect created by the motion blur. And then you can simply modify that and create some very abstract designs. From that. And again, once you're happy with your design there, click apply. Again, hold down the alter option key and you've got other abstract designs which you can add there. And it's all they're all layers, so you can always go over here and you can then obviously with white it's not so effective in terms of all the various things, but you can see you can create some different designs that way. But again, hold down the alter option key and continue. And of course you can group all those together and then go to a layer and you can merge them, merge selected, and then you can work on that to use that as a design as well. Also what you of course got, you've got layer and new layer filter layer, blur and motion blur is over here. Now this one is a, no, a non-destructive effect. So all those before were all destructive effects. You can obviously undo 
always undo or use layers to get around that problem. But what you got, say with this design, I'm not going to go for another one, but motion blur, select that. And now it's exactly the same as before. And you've got the effect there and you can see, and also you can do exactly the same with the interactive. I think the interactive is so much nicer than trying to move this around. I mean, it's okay. You can click on there and change the value that way. But personally, I think this is much nicer. And what you can do, you've also got blending modes. So you can run through, obviously, it's not going to be much use here, but you've got blending modes if you wanted to use them. And of course, more useful, let's just close that. You can see that's a layer. And it's also just applied to that one layer. So if I just go back to this one, I've got this design, what I can do, go to a layer, and I can go down to new layer filter layer, blur and motion blur. And I can, again, apply that. And also you can use preserve alpha, so you can use that as well. And also you've got blending modes there, so you can run through those. And you can create some very interesting designs using that. Now another thing you can do before I finish, I've just got this design, I'm just gonna go back. Just gonna go back to one of these ones. Maybe not that one. Just go with that. What you can also do, you can use that as a source for a pattern. So you've got, it's just a standard layer over here. You've got layers. You can go to layer, and then you can go down, down here, and where is it? New pattern layer from selection. So you've got that. And what you can do, one of the best things I always find, is use mirror. So mirror is set on, it's just up here in the corner. And what you can do, you can reduce the size. Now you can see that I want just to remove that one. And you can remove that as well. Obviously not much use because you want the black background. So you've got that design and you can rotate the design like that. But also what you can do, you can still apply the motion blur. So filters and go to blur and motion blur. And you can see the motion blur applied there. And you can again change the settings there and rotate it around and click apply. And also what you can do if you want, you can always rasterize it. So you don't have to keep it as a pattern layer. Simply go to rasterize down here, layer and rasterize. So it's rasterized. Now you've got this design. You can also use maybe go for, I'm just going to go for obviously one of these ones, the motion blur again, instead of the live filter layer. And you can modify that and you can see. Now obviously it's very, very blurred. It's very hard to see actually. But you can still actively do that and modify it a bit more. So you really reduce the picture to uh, very, very sort of hard to see, sort of smudges and blurs there. I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time. Adding tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity Photo, and many others. Also, if you've got any comments, questions, anything that I've done wrong, anything that maybe I went too fast on, please let me know. Also, uh, if you've got any other comments, always great. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.